Good morning. Steve from UK Outdoors here. It's been a long time since I've been out and about. Pretty, I don't think I've recorded all this year. I don't think I've done a video all this year, to be honest. Um, it's just been up and down. This coronavirus, you know. We can't go out, we can't go out. You can only go out for exercise, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. What time I've spent indoors, I've saved a bit of cash and I've been buying things along the way. So, I'm going to show them you. Look, somebody's doing 100 mile an hour down the road there. Um, I can't talk too loud because just back there, there's a guy in a tent. So like, well, I think he's a guy. Could be, could be, a, could be anybody. Um, but it's a little tiddly one, like a one-man tent. Like one of these sort of 10, 20 quid jobs where it's like one skin. And it's got what looks like a bottle of white lightning or something like that. You know, sort of £1.99, 15 litre cider bottles. It's got one of them outside. So either they've had a really good night last night and they're tired and still asleep. I think it's like coming up for dinner time now. Or they've not got really anywhere else to live. Either way, I don't really want to be waking them up, so I'll just I'll just talk quiet and leave them to it. Yeah. Do I go and see if they're alright? No, nah, they're in a tent, aren't they? They've had a few beers, they're gonna be alright, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I'll leave them to it. Right, anyway. So coming into the new year, I think I'm gonna start doing some uh, trekking, you know going up in the mountains. Um, I want to explore the Welsh mountains and also the English mountains because I've, I've, I've done uh, Snowdon and I've done Ben Nevis but I've not done Scarfell Pike. So I want to do Scarfell Pike but I also like the Lake, Lake District in general because I want to do a lot of, um, you know, like sort of cave um, not not caving, but you know, sleeping out in caves and stuff. I've done that years ago. Um, cave called Millican Dalton's Cave. Uh, I've slept in there a few times, and there's numerous other caves that I've slept in. But I want to do that again, and perhaps take the kids with me this time. A bit of an experience for them. So I've been buying lightweight stuff because there's quite a bit of trekking involved up in the Lake District. If you have been up there, you know what it's like. A few of them are. You know, daft little things, but everything I've been buying is designed to be lighter weight than the stuff I've already got. Right. And some other stuff that's just little gimmicky stuff to them. Come across the way. Right, what we have, I brought something else of comparison as well. If I can find it. Right. This is an OEX BB bag from Go Outdoors. I think it's from Go Outdoors. I can't remember where I got it. Yeah, go outdoors in Preston, I think I got it from. Right, and I've got a British Army BB bag that's bomb proof, never leaked in, breathable, Gore-Tex, value for money. I think I picked it up for about 30 quid. But, it, like everything British Army, is a bit bulky. So, I wanted something that's gonna keep me dry in the winter or in any weather um, and lightweight so it's only, only really going to be sort of designed for like one to two night use at the max so that that's this right you can, as you can see it packs up quite small right so a comparison there's my mobile phone case so it's like not not far off 
and you squash it down. The size of a mobile phone, so like a smartphone, Samsung S20 you've got. So if you if you have a Samsung S20, that's the sort of size you're looking at. Right. I've not actually tried it out yet. I've not actually got in it. Could be crap. Might not even fit me. <laughs> Anyway, I'll line it out, and then you can see what it's like. But, as a comparison, there's the British Army one, and there's the OEX one. So, you get the idea. It's probably probably two to three times heavier. I'll put the spec in the description below for this, and I'm, I think it's like three or 400 grams, and I'm pretty sure this one's like, almost a kilo so there's quite a bit of weight difference quality wise I'm always going to go for the British Army because of the price versus versus quality you're always going to get good quality and you're always going to get it for a good price this one here it, I think it cost me the same price but the quality won't be as good it's not Gore-Tex it's some sort of ripstop material and again I'll find out exactly what all the materials are and all that bump and I'll put that in the description below and you can you know the spec difference you can see for yourself right so nice little bivy bag well I hope it's nice I hope it keeps me dry um, I don't think it's gonna be as breathable as the Gore-Tex it ain't gonna be as breathable as Gore-Tex I'll tell you that now definitely isn't not for that price anyway not for 30 quid or whatever I pay right. but I like it's got a nice little sack I like that so I'm gonna I'll lie that down and get in it and show you right I've let them I've led this one the OEX one on top of my British Army one a because it's more durable the British Army one I know it's gonna withstand all the twigs and branches and spiky sticks because I've used it a hundred times so but also give you a bit of a comparison so if you can see here the British Army one's much wider at the bottom at the top pretty much like for like so if you like a bit of room around your waist around your, your sort of upper body around your chest area they're both fine they're both exactly the same up the top right down below we've got I'm just nearly killing myself here with twigs off the tree if you like a bit of room for your feet Obviously, the British Army one's the way to go, but I'm not getting it for comfort. I got it so I can take it up on the top of a mountain or a hill in a lake district, and I want to bivy out and look at the stars and sleep on top of it, right? Just in the bivy alone. So that's what I've got it for. Up here, you can see you've got a big hood area, right? And then you've got a drawstring on the British Army one and a drawstring on this one. So the, the same, but this one sort of tucks over you more. The OEX one. So you can put your cocoon sleeping bag in there and it'll sort of tuck in. Um, you know. There's not much difference in it, to be honest. So lengthwise, it com comes up to the same sort of area here where you'd sort of, your head would be poking out so I'm gonna get in it now and then you can see right I'll have to be quick because it's raining now and all my gear is gonna be getting wet your boots are shit up so 
I hope I don't get chased off no bloody wardens or anything now. I don't, this land's like derelict land. But I've got no shoes on, so I'm pretty goosed. <laughs> right. Drake's of him. I'm six, six foot three, six foot four ish, thereabouts. So, feet are at the bottom, and I've got, if if I wanted to, I could have boots on in there, but obviously I've got to have room for sleeping bag, etc. But yeah, there's plenty of room in the bottom there. And then, Could easily cater for somebody six foot five, easily. It's got it's got a good few inches above my head there. Plenty of room for a sleeping bag. Plenty of room for a big tall guy. And I'm between a size thirty four and a thirty six waist. That helps. I look, put a little bit of chunk on recently, but I would imagine you've got you know even if you sort of size 40 or above you've got plenty of room there you know if you're a chunky monkey like i used to be you've got plenty of room so it's not some some bivy bags i've tried and they're like dead tight you know these sort of i can't remember what brand it was my, one of my mates got like a really crappy cheap flimsy piece of turd years ago um, that you might as well just pour a bin bag on you because it was sweaty as hell and it got more it got wetter off the bivy bag than what it was outside off the sweat um and that was dead tight so i didn't, I didn't like that I, I weren't gonna buy one of the cheap ones but um well say cheap this is this is pretty cheap for a bivy bag 30 quid it's a bit of a bargain really follow a guy called the English Woodsman who I think he's called Dan and he, he loves OEX gear he proper raves over it um, I've never actually had anything OEX before but this is the first OEX piece of kit and I've got to say first impressions I'm pretty impressed it, the material feels durable And, you know, from what I can see, the stitching looks alright. It doesn't look like it's going to come apart on you. But the only... It just doesn't feel very breathable. But I'll put... I'll tell you what, I'll put a link into this this guy's um, page, the English Woodsman, and he's got, like, 20 or 1,000 followers or something. You know, he's been... You, probably, you might have heard of him already. But... Um, he's into all this stuff so if he's if he's got um a video specifically on this i'll i'll put a link into it and you can see and he'll give you all the ins and outs because he, he goes out at night time and sort of does all the camping and that and and reviews it properly and then he'll tell you in the morning whether it's um you know s sweaty and whatnot but yeah i've just seen here look there's a cheeky little pocket. Cheeky pocket there. I don't think you've got a pocket on the on this one. No. It's not it's not got a pocket on the British British Army one. But yeah, cheeky little pocket there. Just checking if there's one on the other side. No, just one pocket. Well, you know, it's all, it's all right. You can put your mobile phone in it or something. Stop it. Stop it getting wet. The, the sun's shining in the camera there. I'll try and keep my head here. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that piece of kit that I got. Pretty impressed. 30 quid. 
can't really go wrong. I keep saying 30 quid, it might be 40. But I'll put, I'll put it in, like I say, I'll put it in the description below. And then you can, you can see, you know, you know, shop around, see where you can get a bargain. Another good feature about this bag is that I didn't even bother rolling it up, I just scrunched it up. Just shove it in. You know what I don't like is when you get something in the stuff sack, it's far too small and you're having to ram it in. See that just went in. I just rolled it up, just scrunched it, sort of pushed the air out, scrunched it up, and then just sort of give it a bit of a squeeze, get all the air out, and then you've got this design. I'm sure you've seen them before. You get them on dry sacks. So I'm going to squeeze, roll it down, squeeze a bit more. and then twist it round and clip it. And it. It's a nice little pack. I love it. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. So I'm gonna, usually when I go out and I'm trying out a new kit, I always take me, the kit that I've had before as a backup. So, but I think I'll just, I'll sort of just put, put me faith into this one when I go. Cause the idea is it's lightweight and uh, there's no point taking in heavy stuff with you if you're going to try lightweight. So, yeah. If I ever use it and video at the same time, I will use it. But if I, if I take a video, I'll refer back to this video and I'll, I'll sort of let you know how it goes. Right. Now got something else to show you but this isn't it isn't something I've bought during the lockdown or recently but it's something because they were expensive I wanted to give them a try first to see, to see what they were like because I don't want to be reviewing things or advising what kit to buy if I haven't if I haven't done some research myself or if I've tried it out like the OEX bag I get that it's just cheap it's just cheap and it's lightweight and I wanted to buy it but these I, I actually do recommend them right and they are the Montane Ice Grip Glove. Right? I had my eye on them for a while. And I like I like Montane gear. I've, I've, I got myself some Montane Terra pants. And they were awesome. They, I, I looked at the reviews and I wanted some sort of technical sort of pants to go out. And, you know, quick drying ones that were, were durable. And... All the reviews kept poking back to these Montane Terra pants, and I did some digging around, and I think I managed to get some. Uh, I think they were like seventy odd quid in Go Outdoors, and I'm, I, pro I think it's either eBay or Amazon or something like that that I managed to pick them up for about fifty quid. You know, if you if you do some shopping around, you you just get stuff for a lot cheaper. So I fell in love with the Montane pants, and then. There was a sale on again in Go Outdoors, and I went there and I got X, Y, and Z. And um, in fact, I'll do a separate video about my Montane gear because it, it's it's all sort of linking in towards the um, so you know walking on the hills and mountains. I've got sort of thin stuff that I build layers up. So I've Montane, I, I just like it. It's a British brand. I'm not sure whether they're made in Britain, but I do like I do like British brands, 
and uh, you know I, do, I just like them quality is always great the reviews are always great they've always thought about it you know and they've used a bit of initiative when they're coming in to make these products or when they've designed them but the key features of this are um, I wanted something to go on my motorbike in the morning and it needed to be windproof for me windproof and a hundred percent waterproof because when you're going on a motorbike you know once you sort of reach up to like 30 mile an hour it's the, the, the chill factor the wind factor really really gets you freezing and you, your hands go numb so you, you need something decent but if you buy specific motorbike gloves they tend to have like plastic knuckles on them you know for protecting your hands because it's only a 50cc scooter so I'm not going to be doing stupid speed so I wasn't overly fussed on like getting stuff with protective knuckles on but these I think are substantial enough if I were to come off at 30 mile an hour I'm hoping that's not not high enough to sort of proper knacker me knuckles up on my hands but anyway I got them for multi-use right I want I go out about a lot and I wanted them for multi-use so I had these seal skins right? I paid about 30 to 40 quid a few years ago for them and to be honest I liked them the quality doesn't seem that great you see this here this sort of velcro strap that that sort of came apart early doors and they, they, they're not waterproof 100% they, they're just not my hands honestly when we're in a proper torrential rainstorm I used to go on my push bike a lot and they were they were wet after a while I don't know whether I can't ever remember putting them in a washing machine you know I don't I don't think I'd be that numb to put them on like a hot wash and then tumble dry them but they, my hands were wet but I can't remember how long I had them before they were wet but anyway I thought I'm not getting another pair of seal skins and these just weren't warm enough they, when I was on the bike they weren't warm enough right so I got some others some brand called Chiba Ch Chiba 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 I don't know anyway again these were for on the push bike and um, they're, they're all right you know they're all right for sort of summertime not summertime you know if it's raining on a summer's day you've got this little cheeky feature it's like a bit of a mitten and that sort of when you've got your hand on the handlebar that sort of keeps your hand waterproof and you know a bit of visibility so I like the idea but again you know sort of falling apart on me and that and I didn't go rock climbing or anything they're just ones that I've just I don't you know I've been on my bike so and there's a hole there in the finger yeah so I thought why keep buying stuff that's crap and keeps failing on you and falling apart and waterproof when they, when they say they're waterproof they're not my hands have piss wet through they're not waterproof sorry seal skins but they're not 100% waterproof I want to be able to put my hand in a bucket of water and not get wet right that might be asking a bit much but these you can these you can montane ice grip you can put your hand in a bucket of water and they won't get wet i've had them in all sorts of weathers all sorts blizzards bloody not snow because we've not had no snow but i've had them in this british crappy weather and they're great right I love the logo, that's my favourite part. 
but you've got goat's leather, right? It's proper durable. I know your animal lovers are not going to like it, but I bet you that don't stop a lot of you wearing leather belts and stuff. But yeah, goat's leather palm and Gore-Tex lining, the glove itself's Gore-Tex. I'm not sure whether this bit's Gore-Tex or whether it's Gore-Tex inside, but either way, it is a Gore-Tex glove. It's got like a micro fleece inside, super warm, Velcro strap around the top. Again, with a bit of go uh, goat's leather there. And you can sort of fasten them tighter. And then on the fingers, you've got like a little tab. There and there. So you can link the two together with a bit of a little carabiner. And you've also got some tabs here. So you can sort of, sort of hang them up as well, yeah? But all in all, well impressed. Absolute well impressed. If I, if I get any more gloves, they're going to be Montane. And I'm not sure whether these are still going because I searched for them, trying to find a bargain initially. And the cheaper ones, it, I, there was some that was like going for like 60, 70 quid. And they were like oddball sizes. Now, at my hands, if if you've sort of done any sort of manual labour or if you want to go to sort of like some B&Q and just get yourself some sort of gardening gloves, if you get yourself a size 10, that's what sort of size of glove I need. Um, so it, These ones were extra large. So if you base it on that, if... If a size 10 is too big for you, you probably extra large will probably be a bit, a bit too big. But the, my fingers are right to the tips. There's not, there's not much. Once I stretch out, they're just about stretched fully there. So there's not much room to move. So give you a bit of an idea on 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 that sort of sizing comparison. So seal skins. I think I'm just keeping them for novelty reasons, to be honest, because I just don't like binning anything. But um, they're a, probably best suited for warmer weathers when it's just drizzling, you know, and when I'm going on my mountain bike and getting it shit up. I'll, I'll just use these for that. But um, these are my best, Sunday best, <laughs> but I wear them all the time when I'm out and about. They're just great. I love them. Right, my next little purchase, and no, I'm not going to give you a demonstration. <laughs> is it? I've seen I've seen one of these in a video of another guy I follow, and I'm pretty sure that's like one of the mates of this English wood, woodsman. Might might be one of his mates. Um, yeah, is it a little wee bottle? Don't quote me on it, but I think that's also designed for a woman's bits. Like, like the shape. But I didn't buy it for that. Basically, you can pull it out like that. I think it fits about three quarters of a litre. Right, so, when I'm in my bivy bag and I'm in a hammock, two, three o'clock in the morning, Guaranteed, I need a wee. So I thought, what can I get? You know when you're in hospital and they give you the little bottles, sort of weird shape, sort of bottles that you're weeing, like made out of paper mache. I was thinking something like that. But then they're no good, like, because they'll sort of tip out. So this was great got a lid there to sort of stop spillages and obviously you have you have a wee and you tip it out somewhere safe where you're not going to be trodden in it 
and then you don't want the residue sort of getting in your bag so I like the fact that you've got a nice little lid there I don't think it'll be 100% waterproof so if you try shaking it about full of weight I don't think that'll work your bag's just gonna end up stinking but I thought I, was, I think I paid about a fiver for it I'll put this in the link as well because it's a nice little handy piece of kit for anyone who goes baby bagging yeah, I like that I'm going to do a Ralph Harris impression then, but I don't like him anymore. <laughs> right. right, now. Oh, you like me? Zippo lighter. <laughs> Got it for Father's Day. It's lit. There you go. Nice little... I like it, I like it, I like the little pouch as well, keep that, right I'll show, you, I'll show you this, response pack, it's, um, this is a snug pack one, and I got this off a guy called Scott, and I forget the name of his bloody channel now, He's on my Facebook groups. I'll put I'll put a link into my Facebook groups, and um, what's he got? Uh, anyway, he goes to Snug Pack a lot, and he and he recommends the products. And again, I like it because it's a British brand. And this this is like I don't know whether it's what rip offs a bit of a strong word, but it but it's like the Max Pedition version. But Max Pedition one, I'm pretty sure is like 50, 60 quid. And this, I think it, I think it was like less than 20 quid with like postage included. And the idea is, it's got webbing on the back, and it and it can be sort of attached to snug pack bags. So I've got the sleeker Force 35. And then underneath here, you've got webbing, so you can attach it to there if you want. And then the idea is, all your emergency kit is in here. So this, I got it for not not like like a, what you call Americans call like a bug out bag. Um, more like like when I'm visiting family, I've got like family that live up in Scotland, family that live in Wales and I'm always leaving things out and forgetting things so I thought right this bag I'm gonna pack everything that I need lastminute.com so I've got like little mini toothpaste that you you know when you go to the dentist and they have the free samples just pinch a few of them well not pinching them but you know you can the, they encourage you to take them for free so stick them in your, in your sort of bag and then I've got a little like I've got about five of these for a couple of quid off of eBay and uh, they didn't last very long they sort of cracked and that but you know it's just nice little sort of tooth, toothbrush there and then you always get the kits at Christmas somebody got me a little mini kit and I've got that um, that and that just in case, you know, some nice sexy chicks come by in the woods and I want to try to do the lynx effect on them. <laughs> um, that's little, little soap, um, little tiddly pair of scissors, tweezers in case I want to pluck the eyebrows. <laughs> or the nose hairs, I'm getting old now. So I'm getting crusty big long nose hairs. <laughs> oh, I got some hand sanitizer as well. Never know when somebody's gonna refuse entry in case you don't have any hand sanitizer. Right, so that's in that little mini pouch there. I've got that much in it that it's struggling to close it. Well, 
else have we got here? Right, duct tape. I've seen it. I once seen a video of like a thousand things to do with duct tape. So people were like making cups out of it and tying things together and making shelters and repairing gear, tying shoes together, patching leaks, all sorts of shit. Yeah. So I got a little mini gorilla gorilla tape, gorilla tape to keep that with me at all times. I've got a little mini pillow. This is supposed to be the lightest pillow in the world. Like 39 grams or something. A mammoth one. One breath and it's up. Right? Don't get me wrong, you're not gonna have a proper great night's sleep, but it's great to have in the bag. Um, if you're traveling, in a car or something, or you end up in a situation where you, you're not going home that night, it's great just to have. So you can always roll your jacket over the top of it and make it comfy, but you know, it was about a tenner and it's 39 grams, it weighs nothing. So that will be going with me when I go on these lightweight camping trips, when I go bivvying, right? Packs up, you can fit it in your pocket, you won't even know it's there. And you can have this in conjunction with another, you know, I've got other pillows. Just put, put them with it, put two together, you know, it's no biggie. Right, got my torch, right, I'll put a link into this torch as well because uh, I think it's great. daylight at the minute so you can't really see see I can't remember how many lumens it is but again I'll put the spec in for that it's iProtec I think I got it from Go Outdoors again um, and it's like a micro USB so you charge it USB style and it's got like a magnet on that side I don't know don't know what you'd attach it to and then I like this little clip so I put a little clip sort of clip it onto my bag there stick it on this side it's easier you know quick access but it zooms in sort of put twist that there and you've got like a sharp beam and then a big wide beam and then you sort of, you sort of plugs in there, yeah. USB, and it's got a light on it somewhere. I think this little ring round here lights up like red or something when it's charging, and then sort of turns green. It's dead obvious when it's fully charged anyway. And uh, I've got like a little mini energizer pack, battery pack that's like sort of. 5000 AMH, AHM or whatever whatever it is, um, which that's enough to for, sort of charge your smartphone for a full time or you can sort of charge this up with it. So if you get like, one of them little mini battery packs, this is great for that because if you run out of batteries, you can charge it up with that. Now, I do have backups that go with conventional batteries and um, I've got another, like a candle um, piece of kit that I'll, that I'll show you on another video, like a lantern. Um, I use that if I'm going properly, like camping for a couple of nights. I'll take that with us. Oh, I got this link again for Father's Day Webtex sewing kit. The amount of times because I've got a fat belly. I've needed to sort of button my pants back on or if the buckle on my bag's knackered. Um, I don't take this out everywhere I go, but it's just handy. It's just handy when I'm, you know, when I'm going away somewhere for a few days or a week or whatever, it's just handy to have that. So I just keep it in there out the way. And then I keep them, right? I take, the, I take some of these with me. 
because if I'm trekking and I'm stuck and I can't get to the toilet, I've got my little plastic travel, dead lightweight, don't need anything fancy, it only cost me about four or five quid. Um, you get you know, a lot of people buying 30 odd, 40 odd titanium, 30 odd, 40 odd quid titanium shovels for having a crap. But I find this is perfect, it's lightweight enough, it fits inside of my bag. And then I've got this. Wipe any crap out my beard if I have any food and it's got stuck. Or got a snotty nose. But it's always there if you need the toilet. Keep them in the pack, nice and waterproof. There you go. Anyway, so yeah, you get the idea. There's plenty of pouches, plenty of fits in it. I'll stop rambling on about that now. But again, I'll put that in the link as well. You see, the, the, the difference in the reviews for the Max Pedition one versus this Snug Pack one was a lot of people were whinging about the stitching. But what I say is, you've got to you've got to weigh it up what you're using it for, right? So, I paid an expensive price for my gloves, and they were about eighty quid, by the way, eighty or ninety quid. So, I went through about three or four pairs of gloves that were reasonable price. You know, I'm not I'm not talking sort of ten, fifteen quid cheapy ones or the ones you sort of thinsulate ones you see in the garage you know spend ten pound on fuel and you can have these for 2.99 we're not talking that we're talking gloves that are 30 40 quid that are supposed to be substantial and and they weren't so I, I went for the best of the best that I could afford at the time but for this I'm not relying on it to save me life or stop me from getting frostbite it's just to keep my stuff in separated from the rest of the gear so I'm not really bothered if the odd thread comes out here and there because I can just stitch it back up because I've got a sewing kit inside you see so save your money get yourself a little sewing kit and and try this one or you know there's other brands that are similar sort of priced you don't have to go spend fortune just because it's you know max expedition is supposed to be like I think I know the Americans proper rave over it supposed to be really good quality and a lot of gear that comes out sort of model itself on max Expedition, but this I, i've had it since beginning of this year now and uh, i can't fault it to be honest yeah it's got it's a nice, nice little carry carry pouch on it there we go Right, and then all I can show you now, nice little lightweight multi mat because it matches the colour of this snug pack bag. And I put it on the bottom, all I do is tie it in there. I've just got a bit of drawstring, paracord on the bottom. Fastened it on there, and away you go. Protects the bottom of your bag, but then when you get somewhere you're going to sit on a wall or whatever, that keeps your bottom dry. Right, I think it's time for a brew now. And grab something to eat. This is my solo brew kit. I say solo, it can do for two people. So I keep them in there because they're lightweight, I like mint tea, and you don't need milk or sugar or anything. Okay. I've got my C2 Summit cup. It's a bit manky, but sod it. Adds to the flavour. Then we've got the Primus Alutech 600ml cup. Well, 
take up. It's like, like a cooking pot. Right. Then I get these little things, and I'm pretty sure they're like a hundred cl. Hundred and there we go. Hundred and ten gram. So if you get the hundred and ten gram one, that fits in perfectly. And then the lid fits on top, right? So we've got that. And then I just have a bit of a cloth in there to stop it all rattling round. And then I've got the MSR micro rocket, which is a sort of a a sibling to the MSR pocket rocket, but I liked how the pocket rocket sort of fold in. Whereas this sort of folds in and down and it fit in the pot perfectly with that little part there. With, with, a, with a gas canister, sorry. So, I went for this one. It was more expensive. I'm not sure if they still do these anymore. But if they don't, I'll be gutted when this one's not good for me. Let's just hope it lasts longer anyway. Sure there's lightweight ones out there now that you can get hold of, but my my criteria, I actually took the pot with me because I wanted to make sure that everything fit in the pot. That was that was a that was a plan to make a brew kit with a fuel um the lighting source, the ignition source, a spoon and a sort of tea bag, all sort of fit in there, yeah. And yet yeah, it's bloody filthy. So I'm gonna have to wash that out. But there you go, nice and easy. Burn me top, me on then. See, I never, I never watch the kit. When I get back, I always forget. Saying that, I don't really cook anything oily in there. Just mainly boil water. need a massive amount. Let's crank her up. Right, I think it's almost done. Easy stuff. Now, now that I've cooked that, I think I'm going to get myself some wood on. Here is one I made earlier. <laughs> Looks like a bit like a dog's dinner at the minute. But it tastes all right. It's like, um, it's got some chopped up sprouts. And I know a lot of you will say, ooh, yuck sprouts. But when you fry them, they taste a hell of a lot different than the bloody boiled up mushy crap that your nan used to serve you. Because that's how nans used to serve a lot of sprouts. 
not all of them take it easy guys not all of them anyway um it's got some peppers and i'm into this sort of meat free alternatives at the moment when it comes to like processed meats so this is a plant based like a donna kebab style meat and honestly it tastes like meat it feels like you're eating meat but it's a hell of a lot healthier than donna meat so i'm going to put that in there and give it a bash see what it tastes like day after Food on the go. It's all over the bloody place. Doesn't like that. A bit hot. Sizzling a bit there. Like it's burning to the bottom. I hope it doesn't burn me bloody pot, man. smell burning then, there's a bit of wood stuck to the bottom. crank it up a bit. I think the uh, gas is not going to last very long. I think you've only got about half an hour burn time on these but if it sort of boils water within a couple of minutes I think you're probably looking you know sort of 10-15 boils worth so for a price of about three quid you know you're looking you're looking about 15 between 15 to 30 pence per per use and I've only had this on for a minute or two it's not it's not been on long let's see if this is no, not not overly warm I'll put the lid on starting to stick a bit at the bottom now so I'm gonna call it a do at that I'll let you know what it's like mm. bubbling and warm mm. that done me it's really tasty. If you ever thought about trying a plant-based diet for health reasons or whatever, try some of this stuff. I think it's called v Viva from Tesco's. It's about three quid. 
and you probably get about two kebabs out of it. It's not terribly cheap per kilo, but it, honestly, it tastes good and, it, and it's a lot healthier than, you know, regular sort of donami. Mmm. Hot man. It's been a long time since I've eaten outside. Oh, I'm quite cold. But this is properly warming the cockles up, man. I love the little button mushrooms. You know, like you bite into one and it's juicy, so it's like that. Something about a full mushroom that I love. And beauty about something like eating, like the plant-based food, is that it lasts longer. There's, there's all sorts of burgers and that coming out now. That are plant-based, but you can hardly tell the difference. God knows what's in them. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not like it healthy as eating lots of fruits and vegetables, but I'm pretty certain they're healthier than eating an actual burger. But the bonus is, like I just said, they last longer while you're out there, so they're not going to spoil in the sun. You know, if you want to go and cook yourself a nice cheeky sausage or a burger, Richmond do some really tasty sausages, and you can you can't you can't tell that you're not eating meat. You you just think you're eating meat, and you can take them out and about, and they'll last. They'll last longer than meat will, definitely, you know, in the summertime. So, what, what, what I tend to do is cook it at home. Put it in like a pack and then just warm it up while I'm here. Saves on fuel. And you still, you still get the feeling that you're cooking outdoors. You, you use less oil that way as well if you're frying some sausages or what. Like I didn't use any oil whatsoever with this because there's already oil in it. And when I cooked it, I just chucked this in and warmed it up. Mm. It really does sound crap putting sprouts in something, but it's so good for you. And they're really tasty when you fry them. Definitely. Try them with... Um, bit of bacon you know little bacon pieces and pine nuts we learnt that off Jamie Oliver one Christmas and we never went back again I never boiled another sprout ever you always always just fry them or saute them or whatever you want to call it oh, sort of chop them up and shred them mm. Anyway, I'm going to be getting some more videos done in the next 12 months, so hopefully we'll see more of you. Mm. So, thanks for watching guys. <coughs> if you liked it, click like. If you didn't like it, I'm not interested, don't watch it. And go and watch another channel. Oh, sometimes I ramble on. Oh. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. See you again on UK Outdoors.